my mother used to sigh and put a hand on my shoulder and tell me she wished she'd never married my father. I tell her not to say stuff like that to me, but she did anyway. He was an austere man who spent his Saturdays trailing after her, snapping off lights and radiators and calling out, what's the sun for? He was more generous towards me. On my 12th birthday, he bought me a camera and let me develop as much film as I wanted. And when he saw that I had a friend coming over every day, he bought one for her too. Ivy and I considered ourselves revolutionaries. I took photos of rotting flowers and streams of insects, winking in patches of browning grass. She took, she took photos of my nostrils and my ears and my face in silly contortions. Can I put this on your nose, she'd ask. She'd ask, a snail pinch between her fingers, slinking back into its shell. No, I'd say, thanks though. And we said it, um, we snicker as she set it on a piece of dried bark and watch it drift away. The idea came to us one lunchtime as we sat in the shade of a tree, eating slices of cantaloupe and reading a story. The book was hers, all the way from a market in France, and she didn't want to spoil it with juicy fingers. She turned the pages as I pushed vivid squares of flesh into our mouths. We reached our favourite page, a pine tree pocketing three fairies, an elegance to them, a movement, a rhythm in the posture of their pale bodies. They're perfect, she said. Why don't I draw them, I said, then they can be yours. I spent the afternoon curled over the book, sketching one of the fairies in my pad. I made sure to replicate all of her intricacies, the depressions in her dress, the ribbon of light skimming her sleek hair, the slope of it just below the cheekbone. She's so French, I said. I'd like my hair like that, she said. You look like a mushroom, she snorted. All right, then I'll think of some other way to be French. Just go around saying oui, oui, and fromage, and jean, jean. What does that mean? I don't know. I finished drawing and stretched. She crawled over to where, I, to where I was sitting. For me, she said, her forefinger hooked over my wrist. Can we take a photo with her? I ran my craft knife around the fairy and pried her gently from the page. We didn't have any thread, so I tugged at a loose tendril of elastic in my dress and ripped it. A tiny pencil puncture and I could pull it through the fairy. I strung her on a branch of the tree. Ivy unfolded herself from the ground and approached her slowly, almost cautiously. It was as if she hadn't seen me create her, as if she was making a discovery. I raised my camera, wincing as the button clacked, fearing it might break the trance. Ivy reached a tentative finger towards the fairy, her hair now taking up the light like the cutout, her mouth springing into a smile. I took another. The sky reddened and we had our names being called. I piled my things into my trunk along with the fairy and hid it beneath the tree under mulching leaves. We splashed across the beck and ran up the hill. My mother held a cigarette in her left hand and her mother held one in her right and they blew out in unison, creating a hazy bolus of smoke in between them. You're filthy, my mother said. Look at your feet, her mother said. And these dresses, have you been having fun? We've hardly seen you. It was amazing, I said. There was something to show you.